Hey everyone, so this is the small group review uh, for week 13. So this is the, our assessment week for 2A. Uh, we're dealing with the skill 6.ns.1. We're dealing with graphing and comparing integers. It's graphing, comparing, and ordering of integers, but ordering is just comparing larger groups. So we'll keep it that way so you can remember what we're doing. Um, I would suggest that you watch all the way through this video. If you have not been through your math small group, this will, um, this will allow you to get the information that you would have gotten in your small group. And if you watch through the video, you will see me or hear me give out a code. And at that point, um, when you're done watching the video, go ahead and send me an email with that code um, in it. And I will give you points for this week. You won't receive all the points as if you would have been in your small group to talk through things and to work through us, with us together. Um, but I'll give you some credit for watching through the video. So um, this week's work kind of goes over the kinds of things you'll see on your unit test, which will be tomorrow on Friday, and the things that you would have needed to know today on your eight-step test for Thursday. So here we go. First thing you need to be able to do is draw a number line with a range from negative 15 to 15. Then label all the integers that are multiples of five, including zero. I do suggest you pause this video right now make sure that you can do that. You need to be able to do that because it makes ordering integers a lot easier, as you'll find out here in just a second. So go ahead and pause the video and draw me one out. All right, hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused the video and you drew one out. It should look a little something like this. Now yours, uh, I was being nice to say you only had to put the five, the tens, fifteens, and the zero on there. So you've got negative fifteen all the way up, counting backwards to zero. And then on this side, you have your positive integers, 1 through 15. And then complete this inequality, negative 14 less than, greater than, or equal to 3. Hmm. Well, on our number line, negative 14 falls way over here on the left-hand side. 3 is right here, fairly close to 0, but on the right-hand side of our number line. because And because anything to the right on our number line is bigger than the things that are to its left, this would be less than. Negative 14 would be less than 13. Again, 14 looks like a large integer. It's almost five times larger than 3, but because it's on the negative side of the number line, that means it's a deficit. We have to get 14 things in order to get back just to 0 in order to be getting to a positive integer. So negative 14 is less than positive 3. All right, moving on. Comparing and ordering again, we've got the absolute value of negative 7, less than, greater than, or equal to 3. Now in this case, we can look at these again. Of course, negative 7 is on the left-hand side of our number line. Negative 3 is on the right. So you would think that 3 would be larger again. However, when we are dealing with absolute value, absolute value um, refers to the amount of spaces between whatever integer you're looking for and 0. In this case, it's 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven spaces. Now these spaces would be positive because I have moved in a direction. There's no positive or negative movement. We just move in a direction. So we would say the absolute value of negative seven is seven or positive seven. Because positive seven is greater than three, there's positive seven, there's three, we would say yes, negative se or the absolute value of negative seven is greater than Hope that makes sense for you. Just remember when you see those straight lines on the outside, whatever is on the inside is going to be the positive version of that integer. Ordering from least to greatest. Again, you're going to use your number line here. I suggest you pause this and try it on your own, and then I will work this out with you here in just a moment. All right, so hopefully you did that. We'll work through this together. Let's switch to red. I like red. It's easier to see. All right, so my first number, I'm going to start on my left-hand side because I'm going from least to greatest. So I want to start over here, move this direction because this is from least. This would be the greatest over here. So I'm going to start on my least side, and I'm going to start and just go till I find a number in my group. So my first one is negative 14. So negative 14 would be my first integer. Moving on up. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, negative 7 would be my next. 
Now I have negative six, but remember this is the pot. This is the absolute value of negative six, which is actually positive six. So I'm gonna not go with that yet because that's a positive number. So I'm gonna keep moving. Nothing. 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 Looks like three is gonna be our next value. next one would actually be 6. So remember the absolute value of negative 6 is 6. So there's our absolute value of negative 6. And last but not least would be our last integer 12 way over here on the right hand side. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you. This you will need to be able to do on your 8-step and unit assessments. If you have any questions on those, please make sure you're checking in on office hours so we can help you out. All right, moving on. This one says, describe how to determine the absolute value of an integer. What does absolute value mean? Remember, the absolute value of an integer is the number of spaces that integer away is from zero. It will always be the value of that integer, but the positive value. Because, well, three will be three spaces away from zero. Negative three is also three spaces away from zero. So again, uh, we take the number. If it is negative, we make it positive. If it's positive, it stays positive, and that is just the new integer. That is the absolute value of a number. All right, moving on. You will see this on your unit assessment. There is some vocabulary, so I would suggest that you've done the vocab for the week. Uh, not only do you receive credit for it, but it will help you on your test. All right, this is what you would have seen on your eight-step test today and I believe you've got at least one like it on your unit test as well. So Mr. Lambert has $40 in his bank account. He went to get some groceries for dinner, which cost $25. What integer might represent spending $25 on groceries? If you were to create an equation with this information. So what would I do with 25 that shows that I'm spending it? Well, because I'm spending it, that is taking away and my amount of money that I'm taking away. Well, 25. So I would get negative 25. So negative 25 would be my new value here that would represent spending $25. In that case, though, what would represent my zero? So if this is negative 25, I have to think of what am I counting 25 away from or 25 to the left on the number line. Well, it's not going to be zero because $25 is, well, to the right of zero. But if I'm taking away, then I would have negative $25, and that doesn't seem quite right as an answer. So my new zero in this situation would be my starting point. And my starting point in this case, as I'm working through, well, I had $40 in the bank then I take away 25 from it. So I'm going 25 spaces to the left of $40, and that will give me my answer. So my new zero in this particular situation would be 40. You'll need to know that for your eight-step test. Guarantee it. All right, in this situation, how much money would Mr. Lambert have left for buy, uh, left after buying his groceries? Well, we just talked about that. We'd start at our 40, and we'd move 25 points to the left on a number line, or we'd take 25 away. If you were to work that out, 40 minus 25 is uh, $15. And that should be your answer there for that. Moving on, I've got one more set of integers for you. So we talked about uh, in this situation. So I've got some things that an archaeologist has found. And I've got the elevation, or the height above sea level, or below sea level, where that has been found. So it says in this situation, what integer would represent sea level? Hmm. Well, here's what's to look at. I've got feet above sea level here, above, above. Now this is just even steel. Well, this is like just sea level. So that doesn't have anything above or below. And over here, I've got a below. Now, the oddball that sticks out here is just sea level. But if I have some things that are above it and some things are below it, that means this probably falls right in the middle. So what integer represents on a number line the thing that sits right in the middle? Zero. Everything to one side is positive or above. Everything to the left is negative or below. So zero is going to represent 
our C level in this case. You will likely see a question with C level on your eight step test. You will likely see it on iLearn this year. People love testing you with that, but that's a good way to remember that you've got a new starting point. C level is where we uh, measure up and down from. This one, in this situation, what integer would represent the elevation of the woven basket? So here's our woven basket. Again, we have 1,200 feet, but this 1,200 feet is below sea level. So we have our 1,200. That doesn't change. 1,200 feet below sea level. You'd have negative 1,200. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Before we answer this question, here's your code. So you know. The code today is DISC. D I S K. DISC. Here's your code for today. Uh, send me an email with that code, and I'll give you some points for your work today. All right, moving on. The order of the artifacts, uh, order of the artifacts, sorry, from which, uh, which was found at the lowest elevation to that which was found at the highest. This is your last question here. So I'm going to go from my lowest elevation and then working up to my highest. So I'm going to order these by putting numbers by them. We'll start with number one for our lowest and then move up to the highest. So my lowest, remember, below sea level, I only had one below sea level, and that was my 1,200 feet. So that's going to be my first one. These are all above sea level, but this, so these will all be positive integers. Remember, sea level is zero, though, so that is going to be my number two, and then I just work with my integers that are above zero. So that would be 15 is my smallest, moving to the right, 462, and then 721. So it would be the woven basket, then the clay bowl, the arrowhead, the necklace, and the bone. So hopefully that all makes sense for you. If it doesn't, make sure to give me a shout out on office hours or during one of the Zooms so I can work through some of these with you. Yeah, you will see uh, questions very similar to this on your eight-step test this week. Well, I hope, you are, uh, hope you're feeling good about those things. If you don't, make sure to give me a call. You will have your unit test tomorrow, and that's where some serious points towards your grades, so make sure you're feeling good. We'll talk to you guys soon. Good luck.